Hey guys, my name's Tom and I am a re-recording mixer and sound editor. I've been doing this for about, I think, 14 years now. And I've done a lot of independent films, TV shows, video games. Uh, you can check my credits out on IMDb. What I'd like to do for this class is go through the complete audio post-production process for a narrative project. So whether it's a short film, TV show, feature film, there's a lot of uh, information out there on how to use Isotope and how to use different plugins, but there's not really like a holistic from A to B, here is how you go from an AAF from the editor to a finished 5.1 mix. And that's what I'm gonna be taking you step by step through on these videos. To start with, assuming you've, you've landed the gig and you've gotta get material from the editor. So what do you actually need? Two or three things. The first is an AAF. You're gonna get all of the clips they have, everything will be in sync, more or less, uh, and you'll get some of their volume automation. So it's a good starting point, and it, it really is like the seed that you plant to grow the rest of uh, the sound. So most of the time you're working in 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, which is your sample rate, and you wanna ask for 10 second handles. And the next thing you need is a reference video, which will be a quick time video, and ProRes 422 or DNX HD are preferred, but the file size is pretty big. So if you're working remotely or they just want to email you stuff, they will probably send you an H.264, uh, which you'll then ideally convert to one of these codecs that's not so compressed. It's just easier on your processor and computer, and it also has better sync. These are also nice for editing because they're really quick. You can frame frame, frame, frame over, left or right, and the video is just bam, right there. Whereas H.264 will lag a little bit. So when you get to the point where you're really fast, it actually slows you down to have those compressed videos. Uh, and then ideally, you would ask for all of the production sound from the shoot on short turnaround gigs or where they're not paying you right to actually do like a complete reconform of all the production sound. You don't have to, but I'm approaching this as you want to do every gig the best possible. You don't want to cut corners. So type, type, type. I send that to the editor. He sends me all this stuff that I need. So I've already got a session here, but let's say we were going to make a new session. You're going to name it whatever you want. Uh, make sure you understand where you're putting it on your hard drive. Uh, ideally, you have an external hard drive, not your um, system drive where your operating system and everything is. Uh, and by the way, I'm I'm in uh, a Mac operating system, so if I start throwing out keyboard shortcuts, I'm you know if you're on PC, they they won't match up 100%. But you can check out the Pro Tools reference manuals for all those. So you want to use broadcast WAV files. Bit depth should be 24 bit. Sample rate should be 48 kilohertz. You name your session, and we've got a blank session here. Um, you'll want to make sure that your I/O setup is going out to your monitors. We're gonna start working in stereo just because then you can work on headphones, you can take it on a laptop. We'll end up in 5.1 when we do the mix. But for now, let's just stick with stereo. So I've got my output set up, that's fine. And we've got a blank canvas to start with. So first thing I'm gonna do is import the video. So that is shift option, Command I to import the video, and for uh, it takes me a while to spell it out because it's just muscle memory now. Um, but you can also go file import if you don't like using shortcuts. So I know it's in this folder. I know where I saved it. I was sent a crappy MP4, so I converted it to a codec that could play back a little bit better. And you need to tell Pro Tools where to store the audio file that you're bringing in from the video. Now the audio file that's tied to the video is, it's kind of like a roadmap for stuff. It gives you a reference for sync, which is normally spot on, but sometimes it's out of sync in the guide track. Um, it also gives you a guide for any temp sound effects or temp mix as far as levels on music and and sound effects and dialogue. And it'll also tell you if the dialogue has been processed to make it sound a certain way. Normally there will be a timecode burn on the video window. So you wanna make sure that 
your session time code matches up with that. If there's no time code, you can start it at zero, you can start it at hour one, and it doesn't really matter so much until you get to the QC process. Make sure the guide track is set to play out your mains. You can go ahead and check it just to see. I'll bring the heroin. Okay, so now that we've got the video in, uh, we have to bring in the AAF. So to do that, it is Shift Option I, and it'll say choose a file to import session data from. It's right here, so I'm gonna import it. And this will take a while on a feature. Uh, a lot of the times you'll be working in reels, so a reel is about around 20 minutes, um, give or take. And it's kind of the old school way of working. It, in one sense, it's really nice because it gives you bookmarks like, oh, I just have to get through the rest of this reel today. And it does make it to where if your computer's a little slow, you can have each reel in a separate session, which keeps everything more confined. It's also nice for conforms because if you have to conform reel two, it doesn't affect reel three, four, and five. Uh, and they just kind of they're a little bit quarantined. Anyways, back to this. So import session data, got a whole bunch of information here about start time code, time code, bit rate, sample rate, um, all that stuff. Normally you don't have to mess with this. Here where it says audio media options, you wanna do force to target session format. This will make more audio files because uh, it's gonna copy them to your session audio files folder, but it gets it out of that embedded AAF. It makes sure everything is 2448. And it kind of gives you like, it's a lot easier to move your session around then because you're not having to be like, oh yeah, I need to grab this AAF and I need to grab this and I need to grab that. So organization is something that is really important. Uh, and especially once you start working with other people. So this is just kind of the first step. So force to session, force to target session format. You can turn off the video track, you're not gonna need that. And then you wanna import the clip gain volume, only include the clips on a timeline. These are all the default settings, they're fine. And then you can see here we've got quite a few tracks. So I'm gonna hit cancel because I've already done this and I don't wanna re-import the entire feature. It takes a while. What I do have is I have the AAF tracks right here for this scene that we're gonna be working on which is just a two minute scene. So I'm gonna test this real quick. We're, we're just gonna watch the scene with the guide track just to get a sense for it. Should have seen that French fox face explode. Jack, pick up. You're playing with fire. Hello? It's me, Kitty. Fuck the French. Alex is gonna kill me if he finds out. I called Renucci to make a deal. Oh, take I did it, it for my baby. Calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. I got the heroin. You got what? The heroin. Who else knows? Eddie and now Renucci. Just bring it down here. Where's let Jackie take care of it. Another whole crying about an abortion? Yeah, something like that. French Jack will get you high uh, Get the fuck out of here. I got business to handle. What about dropping the money off? That's the mom. I could watch it, keep guard. I got my muscle watching it all night long. Besides, I don't want junkies watching my cash. Like you don't use. That crack, that shit'll kill you. I'm fucking going. You have a good night, Jack. Get out of here, fucking junkie. To start with, 
you know, we've got the AAF in here. So you've got the editor's tracks, which are pretty light. There's production sound. There's some temp sound effects here. And then here's the temp ADR. So to start with, I'm going to make these active. Make sure they're going out to the correct output. And now I'm going to mute the guide track. I'm actually going to move these up to the top too. I like to have the video and guide track at the top just because that's, if that's the roadmap, you know, you always want to be looking up for the directions. Um, There's also some sync issues, which I don't know if you guys caught. Uh, the sync was off on a couple of the shots, which we'll have to fix just by eyeballing it, uh, since there's not a solid sync reference for it. So this production sound here is a stereo mix. Now, I know for a fact that the production sound here will have a boom for this guy. It'll have, uh, and two labs, you know, one for him and one for French Jack, who's kind of like the, the, the boss of this world. But I don't have them here in the edit. The editor just cut with the stereo mix from the field recorder, which is pretty common. Uh, and so we're going to have to relink to the original poly wave files from set as before we even get started editing, we're going to have to do that. So we'll get to that. But first, what I want to do is I want to get this kind of organized. There's a couple blank tracks here. I'll delete those. Uh, these are blank tracks. Now, what you can do, what I often will do before I start messing with stuff, is just take these. I will um, batch rename them. So we're going to clear the existing name, and I'm just going to add OMF. And we're going to do numbering, starting with 1 and incrementing by 1. So let's do that. Okay, so we've got our OMF tracks. They're just eight tracks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate them. And I'm going to hide the originals. So why am I doing this? If I delete anything or mess anything up, and I'm like, oh man, I got to go back to the editor's OMF, this makes it to where I can do that at the click of a button versus having to re-import the entire 4 to 12 gigabyte OMF. So I'm going to hide and make those inactive. I should never touch those again, just because, um, you know, I'm going to be working on a copy of that. So what do we have here? Well, I know I'm going to have to sync all this stuff up. Probably not this. This is this here. If he finds out, I called Renucci to make... That's all that temp ADR. Since we're going to be using the field recorder workflow, I will make one mono audio track that's just called FRT for field recorder track. And I really suggest color coding. So I'm going to make that one red. I like to do things in groups of eight or 16, just because most control surfaces are either 16 or 32 or 24 or 48 tracks. So it makes it easy to bank around. So I'm just going to start by adding, let's do 16 mono audio tracks. Now, we're getting into the session setup before we even start touching the tracks because we want to be organized. Different mixers and different dialogue editors will have different setups for their dialogue tracks. Some people want to have maybe six or eight tracks of regular production dialogue total, and then production effects, which are PFX tracks, FUTS tracks, which are for like that phone call when you want to hear it through the phone, and then maybe some ADR tracks. What I'm going to do is, is set this up in a way that we're going to have A and B dialogue tracks. That way we can checkerboard entire scenes and see where the cuts on the scenes are. And then I'll do some production effects tracks, and the rest will be pretty standard. So let's do six. So I'm going to batch rename these. And it kept my settings to clear the existing and add. So we're going to call this ADX. I'll actually put a space there. And we want to name and number those. Okay. 
So those are all named and numbered. Let's make those that color orange. Now these ones, I'd like to batch rename those as BDX. And we're going to color those slightly different. Let's do two futz tracks. You might have to add more if there's a lot of futzing. Let's do two PFX tracks. Production effects are sounds that aren't dialogue, like the phone going down, or footsteps, or a creak, or sometimes they'll use blanks on set for gunshots, and you want to keep those. It's a really cool story about heat, where they kept the production sound because it just sounded so cool echoing off the buildings in downtown LA. But these will be routed to your m &E as well, your music and effects. That way you can cut out production sound from the dialogue and it makes it to where you don't have to foley that or if you do want to foley it, you can quickly see, oh yeah, I can easily mute this. We'll get more into that later. Now, I already ran out of tracks. I'm going to need two, we'll call this temp ADR even though this is a low budget movie and these will definitely be in the final. So I've got A dialogue, B dialogue, two FUTs, two production effects, two temp ADR. Now there's also some temp sound effects, which I can see they are stereo. So I'm going to make two stereo temp sound effects. Now why do you want to keep those? They're paying you to do sound design, and your stuff is obviously going to be a million times better, which is not always true. But in the mix, the director might say, hey man, I like what you did, but check out what we had in our edit. Check the temp. Match the temp. It's a dance that you do every mix. Go back to the temp. Well, okay, here, I've got them right here. I can unmute them. For now, though... I'm going to make these inactive. I don't want to hear them. I just want to focus on the dialogue first. Dialogue is king. And so the next episode will go into actually editing the dialogue. But first we have to kind of set the table and get everything organized. So my goal with all this is to dump these tracks. All these duplicate tracks that I made, they're all nasty. I want them off of here. And I don't want to... I don't want to have a messy session. What I'm going to have to do with this stuff here is I'm going to be looking for the production sound on this to sync it up. But first I just want to have a look here. There's a little bit of checkerboarding going on. There's this zoom temp ADR stuff for the girl. Uh, there's even, look at this. This happens all the time. The editors will have sound effects on their dialogue tracks. All these are duplicates. The left and right channel are the same, and I only need one channel for the field recorder guide track. So I'm gonna delete this. This. The heroine. The heroine. It's the same left and right, so I can delete all that. This is gonna be the same as that. And then, what's all this? This is all zoom. So I'm trying to just whittle this down. Okay. So, session's all nice and pretty. That's really nice. Um, what I'm going to do here, look at this volume automation. I know they spent a lot of time doing this, but it's just going to make my job harder. So I'm going to delete that. I'm actually going to bring this up to zero just to start off. I'm going to copy this automation. So I'm just hitting Command C and then hitting the semicolon button to go down, paste, semicolon down, paste, semicolon down, paste. That gives me everything starting at Unity, um, which is the way to go. It gives you better gain staging down the line and you're not starting with stuff maxed out. So I'm dragging all this stuff up to here to field recorder guide track. Okay. Now, I haven't told Pro Tools to make this a field recorder guide track yet, so right-click it and 
field recorder guide track. Bam. Now I have to select areas to search. I've already got this set up, but if I wanted to add something, you just click the plus and it's here, 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 production sound. Bam. That's I want to grab all that stuff. Okay, save and index. Now what I can do, I'm going to, this is what I'm working on, so I'm going to mute this. That way I know when I'm done, I can go and delete it. Okay, just to check and make sure that this is working, I'm going to right click this and go to matching field recorder channels. So the downside with this workflow is it will have all these garbage regions here that are just copies of what's already in the session. So if you've already got from the OMF or AAF audio files, it's going to look at the name and be like, oh yeah, this, I see this, this is here. So if you just expand this out, you'll have this many tracks. It's going to bring all this stuff in. It's going to give you a bunch of garbage to go through. So what I'm going to do first is just listen to the boom. Uh, a lot of the times the boom will work. Sometimes it doesn't. What I like to do is default to the boom. If it sounds good, use the boom. If it doesn't, then I use the labs as a like problem solving tool because they pick up lots of clothing noise. They're unnatural. Sometimes you have to use them, but I prefer the boom. And it's usually a more expensive, better sounding mic. So I'm going to check that out for this. So I'm going to click that. Brings it in. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, so what's in there is like a inhale from the cigarette. So we want to keep that. Now, if you look at the naming here, this take, let me make this a little bigger so it's easier to see, is called 103 Alpha Take 1. 103 Alpha Take 1. 103, take four. The way I like to lay out my tracks is checkerboarded just like how they shot it with, for example, the first take up on the top track. So I'm just going to grab the boom on both of these. Before I even listen to the edit, I'm going to drag them down. So I'm going to use this top track here as for just straight up, 103 straight up. And I'm going to use the second track for 103 Alpha and this third track for 103 Bravo. So I can go through, I want the boom for that. Let's just listen to this. So that's all good, a good example of stuff that can go on production effects. There's no heavy breathing. Um, there's no you know, vocalization, so that's fine. You want to have that for the M&E. Let's keep going. Okay, got that. That we can use the boom. So again, see, I'm keeping this on the same track. That'll help me when I mix because this whole shot might have a certain noise and then the other angles might have a different noise, like this shot here, the reverse, might have a totally different noise profile. By keeping everything on the same tracks, you can process it linearly and it makes it a lot easier. So I'm just going, so here's zoom. That is production effects. That's production effects. But it's a different production effect than this, so I'm going to have it on a different track. I'll often end up with a lot of PFX tracks, maybe four to eight. Um, and I just add what I need instead of having a bunch of empty ones that I don't need. If you listen to the mix track, which is what they had in the edit, there is a breath in there, which is kind of nice. Let's see if... Okay, so this will be a little tricky. I'm going to control option click and just drag a copy down. They used on this cut here, you see there's a video cut, but there's no audio cut. But in the original track, there's a little breath sound for French Jack. 
So we're going to get his lav mic. Hear that? It's really scratchy, so we'll have to clean that up. Because this is boom and this is a different mic, this is why having A and B tracks is nice. I'm going to put French Jack's lav on A, DX5. And if I have to use Alec, that's, that's this guy here, his lav, I'll put it on ADX6 and just keep them there for the whole scene. So let's keep going here. You should have seen that French fox. All right, let's switch that mix out for the boom. You should have seen that French. Already sounds way cleaner. And that's another zoom. I'm not syncing up the zooms because I already know this is all the mics. They did, you know, they just recorded one track basically. You're playing with fire. Okay, so now we've got a clip from 103 Bravo, which is going to go down here, but let's check out the boom. You're playing with fire. So it's good, except where he says fire. You're playing with fire. And it's marginal. So again, that's control option to keep, uh, to do a copy and keep it in sync. If you don't use control, you can throw it out of sync and that's not good. All right, let's get French Jack's lav here. You're playing with fire. All right, now even though this is alpha and this is Bravo, I'm still gonna keep it on the same track just because it's probably gonna be close enough where it all needs to be processed the same. Let's keep going. Okay. There's some breaths and footsteps in this. Hello? And there's a hello. Let's see if the boom is good for this. Hello? Yeah, it's fine. It's a little roomy, but it fits the shot. Now, this is 103 straight up, so that'll be on track one. Let's keep going here. So here's a good example of something that's off mic. That's the, mom. That's the, mom. the camera's looking at him, French Jack is off camera, uh, and the boom is off mic. But we've also got Alec breathing on it. That's the mom. So we gotta keep that. But control option, drag. We wanna keep both. So let's see. That's the mom. Pretty clean. Pretty clean on French Jack there. And I just have to remember which track item on five. So that way when I do, you know, the mix automation for this, I can just write it all the way down for the scene. All right, let's keep going. I can watch it keep going. That's going to be boom. Alpha. Ooh, we got a Charlie here. Let's see what the boom sounds like for Charlie. <laughs> I got my muscle watching it all night long. And again, some people will just right click it and expand matches to new uh, tracks by match criteria. If you want to do that, that's fine. You will end up with a shit ton of tracks. And it's, I prefer just going shot by shot and getting what I need, just the mics that I need versus let the computer do everything and then have to go through and clean up a bunch of garbage. So it's a little bit tedious, but it's like, creates less extra files. That crack, that should'll kill you. I'm fucking going. It's almost okay just because of how wide the shot is, but let's check out Alex Lav. I'm fucking going. It's a little nasty, but we can clean it up. And I kept this track open for Alex Lav right there. You have a good night, Jack. It's not too bad. Let's just see what his lav sounds like. You have a good night, Jack. Lots of noise. We'll see about cleaning it up in the edit. Get out of here, you fucking junkie. Okay. Uh Get out of here. 
Now another time you might want to use both boom and laves is like that when he hits his shoulder right there. That sounds best on a boom. It just sounds like you're in the room with him. Bam. But then you listen to the lav. Fucking junk. It just sounds too dead. Fucking junkie. So I'm gonna use both. And that's the scene. So I'm gonna delete that. And next I'm gonna work on this track. So I'm gonna mute it so I know what I'm working on. Go up here, do the same deal. Check the boom out. Yeah, something like that. Okay, now that's out of sync. We'll have to fix that. But I'm gonna save that for the end. I'm just trying to get the material on my tracks. I do think I'm gonna grab his lav mic for that one. Yeah, something like that. That might help. Okay, so that track is done. You can delete these. I'm just paring down these work tracks or OMF tracks until they're gone. Okay, that's just some stuff, some room tone and noise. I'm gonna put that on PFX. I actually might not even use that, so I'm muting that region. Okay, and I forgot to mute this to show that I was working on it. Okay, so what do we got here? Jack, pick up. Let's see if I can sync this up. If there's anything to grab. Look at that. Found it. I'm going to bring it in and just see if the waveform looks any different. It's exactly the same. So I can actually use this from the edit without conforming it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, I know this is, even though it sounds kind of shitty it's ADR it's temp ADR oh, come on Jack pick up um, I can clean it up so I think we'll end up using it but we do want to have it on a set I did it for my baby of, I of tracks now the issue here let's talk about futz tracks so these temp ADR tracks are just straight up they need to sound like production sound but we've got phone call and those, the phone call end where we're on this shot and we're supposed to be hearing her through the phone, those need to be on FUDS tracks. So that's what these are for. Make sure you're definitely hearing at FUDS. Is just throw on a simple high pass, low pass EQ. Bring the high pass up pretty high, like around, I don't know, 800 hertz. And then this is not as important, but you know, have this down around maybe 4,000 hertz. And then option, click, drag to copy it. So this is a futz track here. I did it for my baby. I think. I did it for my baby. I... That's good enough. The heroin. And that's just straight up temp ADR. So we've only got one track left. It's me, Kitty. Okay, that's going to be temp ADR. Notice how I'm keeping all these on the same track, so I can process them the same. Jack is gonna kill me if he finds out. Okay. Hold Renucci to make a deal. Those both go on futs, and I'm gonna put them. Now here's something that's kind of interesting. There's an overlap here, and the human voice is a monophonic instrument. So I like to, if they do that. If you have to do it, you have to do it. But if you can get by without doing it, try to keep it all in one track. Tell me to calm down. So here there's a cut that happens where it goes from a futz to non-futz. And it goes back too. So I'm dragging those to the futz. I'll put that there on the non-futz. Me and now Renucci. Here's another one, and it looks like the cut doesn't even match where the picture cut is. So I will fix that. Okay, yep, futz to not futz, back to futz. Okay. And make sure everything is on the right track. So now at this point, 
All right, so we have imported our video, imported our AAF. We've set up our session. We have organized the AAF from the editor, and we've even synced up the original production sound. It's synced with the guide track, so there's some sync errors we'll have to go in and fix. But we've even split it based on shot and mic. We've got our futz tracks, our PFX, and our temp ADR. So before we say, okay, we are ready to get started on our dialogue edit, we really need to watch this because we've just done a whole bunch of work and make sure that we're not missing anything. So I'm going to start it from here and we'll just play it back. I've seen that French fuck's face explode. Jack, pick up. You're playing with fire. Hello? It's me, Kitty. Fuck the French. Alex is gonna kill me if he finds out. I called Renucci to make a deal. Well, I did it for my baby. Calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. I got the heroin. You got what? The heroin. Who else knows? Eddie and now Renucci. Just bring it down here. Where's Alex? Let Jackie take care of it. Another whole crying about an abortion? Yeah, something like that. French Jack will get you high uh, tonight. Get the fuck out of here. I got business to handle. What about dropping the money off? That's the mom. I could watch it keep guard. I got my muscle watching it all night long. Besides, I don't want junkies watching my cash. Like you don't use. That crack. That shit'll kill you. I'm fucking going. You have a good night, Jack. Get out of here, you fucking junkie. All right, so a couple things. I did forget to remove. Actually, it looks like the volume automation is fine, but I'm just going to 86 that. And I left a marker here because there's an off screen laugh. If you listen right here, get you high uh. tonight. Hear that? Huh. I'm not going to be able to remove that unless I look for an alt. And it, it's kind of cool. It fits his character. So I'm going to grab French Jack's mic here. And we had it on track five. Uh, yeah, we'll keep that. Uh, that way, once it's aligned, it'll sound better. It'll still have an off mic component, but it won't be so just, you know, like a mistake sounding. And then the other thing, uh, that was all fine. There's some holes I'll have to fill with stuff. Um, and then I just want to do, I don't know if I skipped over this, but these six tracks here that I didn't use, these would be for the preceding and following scenes so that it's checkerboarded. That way you can quickly see like where the scene breaks are. And also once you set up VCAs, you know, you might be like, hey, this scene is a little hot compared to that scene. It's super easy to just take the B tracks, turn them down 3 dB and fix it versus having to ride over transition or all six individual tracks with uh, six fingers, which is in probably includes a thumb somewhere. So it's just a lot easier to do it that way. But I think we are ready to start our dialogue edit, which will be the next episode. If I skipped over something or you didn't understand something, leave a comment and I will do my best to answer that. Um, and stay tuned for the next episode, which is when we'll actually be editing this dialogue. And, uh, you know, that is a little bit tedious, but you have to do it. It's really what removes the seams from the teddy bear as far as, you know, it going from just a, what we heard, which is a mess and all these cuts that you hear and stuff dropping out to like, oh, now it feels like this really happened in real time. 
and it starts to remove some of that uncanny valley of, oh, this has been edited together. So it's really important. So stay tuned for that, and I will catch you guys then.